Hey everybody, I have Jessica Arendt here and we have not been on with her for a while because she's been in Houston at the Expo. The CBD Expo is very exciting, has some great news for us and also has a couple of other things to announce from Canva.life too. Hey, hey Jenny, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. So yeah, um, I just came off of a CBD Expo Southwest, South. Um, that is Celeste Miranda's program. I was a panelist on four separate panels, um, the topic of which was compliance and regulation, label entries, content management, social media management, et cetera, and what the FDA and the FTC are out looking for um, in terms of striking brands for um, infractions. So it was a really informative weekend. Um, there was a great turnout. Everybody was super safe. Um, you know, I did a lot of live videos, talked to a lot of different vendors. Everything was masked. We did stay 20 feet, I mean, six feet apart and everybody did get um, temperature checks. So it was amazing. We saw a lot of criticism come in from other event planners um, in the idea that we were coming together so soon with the whole COVID thing. Um, but the feeling was that if we maintained <clears throat> autonomy and we stayed, you know, in that distant space and we were masked, we were relatively safe. Seems that it was a successful event. I did not hear of one person now, here we are three weeks later, that got sick from the event. So I would say that's a big plus. Um, we had some very key players come out for that event, which was pretty exciting. Um, a lot of things were learned and, you know, it looks like we're kind of starting to work back towards normalcy, if you will, in our trade show and events and educational platforms. So that was super exciting. You also, um, you had mentioned before, I'm sorry, you had mentioned before that people and other vendors and stuff had masks, they had hand sanitizer if people needed that, and they had hand sanitizers everywhere if people were afraid of that. Um, right. And the masks, and that was wonderful, and I think that really... Um, actually brought this or took this um, first event for the CBD world right now to another level. Yeah, you know, they didn't have this kind of control at Champs a few months ago in Orlando, mm -hmm. which was a vape mm -hmm. and tobacco event. Mm -hmm. They had an occupancy for that Champs of roughly 20%. And it was kind of a dead show from my perspective. Now, mm -hmm. others probably walked away with some business because, you know, it's a good old boys club and they all know each other. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was a really interesting comparison. Um, CBD Expo was super successful. I know that a lot of business was written. Um, so everybody came away with a really positive experience. And I think really from the perspective of morale as a whole, it kind of like, I don't know, it, 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 it sparked, it renewed faith that, you know, we are still connected, um, which is so very important because we're all feeling so yeah. isolated. So, sorry. Okay, vegan gummies. <laughs> yep, the gummies. So, um, I love these gummies, by the way. Look, I'm almost, well, these I'm almost done with. We'll talk about these after. But will you tell us okay. about the gummies and, and tinctures and oils, because you were talking about before, that those are kind of like the big sellers at CBD. Oxygen. So you just got super emotional, and that's because of the disconnect, right? And you've been trapped inside of your house now since March? Um, with Mark coming and going, and that's pretty much it. it. It gets very, very lonely, and it gets very overwhelming. And that's really become my new message. You, you know, so I was thinking about this this morning, and, and we're getting sidetracked, but this is really important, and especially since this hits for you, okay? I am a really strong personality, and I'm coming to understand exactly what that strength means. Mm -hmm. I came from an upbringing in which isolation and alienation was used for punishment. Mm -hmm. I'm a very social being, have mm -hmm. always been a social being. So for my parents, the best results for conform to ideas or house rules um, was literally to isolate me and alienate me. And my mm -hmm. mother continued these patterns until the last exchange that we have in at which point I decided at my age and at her age, enough is enough. And you know what? God bless you. Move on with your life, but we can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
uh, is a cruelty. We feel it. And what people don't understand, what people don't know is that isolation like this, the impact and the loneliness, it is a true and real physical feeling and chemistry that happens in the brain that literally physically hurts. And that's mm -hmm. why it has been historically used as a punishment, if you will, to get mm -hmm. humanity to conform. Right. Concentration yeah. camps is a great example of that. Yeah. Work camps are a great example of that. Our mm -hmm. jail system is a great example of that. Yeah. The toll it takes on the human psyche, however, goes miles and miles and miles. And I'm a great testament to that. I reached a point so, and I'm just gonna take this a step further because we're having this very real dialogue and it's really important, okay? So my children more or less came into adulthood, if you will, um, one basically seven years ago and the other one nine years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. Nine or 10 years ago. And from the moment that happened, I stopped existing. Literally from one day to the next, I stopped existing. Getting them to return calls, return texts, important events, not important events, constant rejection, betrayal, lies. They were alienating me and they were isolating me. And this has gone on now for seven and nine years respectively in each of my kids. And it traumatized the holy hell out of me. Mm -hmm. To this day, it is a very contentious relationship because where I come from, when you have a reciprocal relationship and a loving relationship, it is mutually supportive. Therefore, what's important to me should be important to you and vice versa. That's not the characteristics and boundaries of that relationship for whatever reason, not by my doing, but is the real and true dynamic of it. Mm -hmm. After a lot of therapy, and a lot of work, what I've come to understand is that that isolation and alienation mentality got passed from my mother to my ex-husband who learned the behavior in order to punish me and pass it along to now my adult children to teach them that behavior. At the end of the day, it really comes down to mental stability and strength. And I have come to understand through all of these life experiences in my own alienation and isolation mm -hmm. processes or experiences, mm -hmm that I've grown very strong in my ability to cope under the circumstances, but the norm is, Jenny, you, you're the norm. And it's beyond your understanding and reality and it becomes this pressure cooker. Well, I think that most people that know me, Jessica, know that I'm quote unquote the social summit, right? And yeah. that's why we were introduced and everything because I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in this industry and I'd go to events and people would get mad at me afterwards. I say, why well, there was a line to talk to you. I couldn't talk right. to you. It, right. And then they send you an email or a text and you're like, sorry, but I guess, mm -hmm. sorry, that happened, but we can meet later. We can meet tomorrow. And that's what happens with you too. And at least you've been out and I haven't really been out. And I had two people that came over on Christmas Eve, scared the SHIT out of me because they were here forever. One of them was touching everything, touching my medicines, touching my, I was like, oh my God, because nobody's been here. Nobody's been here, except for the doctors that have to come and do physical therapy on me. Right, That's so it. we've got a situation now where you're living inside of your environment, mm -hmm. your personal yep. environment, and you're fearful for your life because some government person told you mm -hmm. you needed to be afraid when right. our numbers of catastrophic return on this virus are so low. And at the end of the day, we come back to, we are living beings mm -hmm. and life. You know, when you, when you get that expression, you say that expression, I want to go out and live. Okay. You're the mm -hmm. living being. Yeah. So if you are housed inside of your four walls and you are imprisoned into your four walls, you're not living. It's really small too. <laughs> It's very small in here, you guys. It's very small so, here from what I'm used to. So, you know, and we're living very different realities. I'm in Florida. You're in Colorado. Your governor's right. like, close it all up, shut it all down. Everybody sequester, and we're gonna wait for the storm to pass. And my state is like, open the goddamn doors, go to eat in the restaurants, spend your money, and continue economy. It's a very interesting 
mm, diversity in concept about how to deal with this, but I will tell you this, people in Florida are a hell of a lot happier. People mm -hmm. in Florida talk about, yep, it's a risk. I could catch it. I may have underlying conditions. It may kill me, but you know what? So could the fast food around the corner. Yeah, right. right? So could the emissions from my car, so could the cancer that I have yet to be diagnosed with or whatever the fuck else blood clot in my leg, who knows, who right. knows, mm -hmm. but yeah. to, to shut yourself in, close the door and live in a bubble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not living. And we got, we need to return to living. So I get yeah. it. And sorry, I'm sorry. sorry about the tears, everybody, but I've had a couple yeah. of videos where I've done that recently. But, but it's, it's everybody's I mean, reality it is. and you're no different. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people that can absolutely relate to you in this whole equation. So, you know, staying that mental focus of positivity, it's not, it's not always positive. It's not always possible. You, you right. do the best you can. Right. Exactly. And a lot of you saw the um, videos that I did on anxiety and depression and things like that. And I, I've never thought that I had anxiety or depression, but I'll tell you something right now. Kind of come to realize that it's not everybody around you that has that, that you're trying to help. It's you too, if you get to a point like this. Right. Because right? you're I like- I went through it. I go through it every single day. So, you know, I didn't, yeah. I got in the car this morning. I felt so strange. I, I was like something horrible. I don't want to drive to the office. I mm -hmm. wanted to stay home and stay safe. And then I went, nah, I got to go to work. Stuff has to happen. Right. But yeah, we all, we all experience that anxiety, anxiety, because we're constantly dwelling on the unknown, the unknown of our, of our politics, the unknown of the election, the unknown of whether or not we're going to get financial aid, the unknown of education, the unknown of mental stability, the unknown of the COVID again. crisis. Right. And it goes right. on and on and on. So how do you expect to reasonably survive mm -hmm. this? Right. And nobody's talking. Right. right. For God's sakes, talk about it. Because that's really important. Yeah. Don't fight about it. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Right. I completely right agree. Because see is the fighting. Because sometimes I want to say to my neighbors, shut your freaking kids up. Because I don't have kids, right? And I'm like, why? Like, why are they in the hallway running up? Because there's only two of us in this hallway, not two building or two apartments on this side of the building. I'm like, why? And you know what? They've been in lockdown. Those kids haven't been able to go to school. Right? So what are you going to do? Say, get in your house and be quiet. No, you're not. You're going to be like, hey, you know what? Do whatever you want. And so I think people are learning also to have more patience because they need to, because it's to. not, it's not fair. Like it's not for the, for the younger generation, for us, for no one. And so I think everybody's learning to maybe be a little bit more <laughs> patient so or trying to. Anyway. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm pretty far right and I'm an anti-masker mm -hmm. and I just lost my first close personal relationship yesterday to seemingly COVID and I've been really confused the last 24 hours like have, do I have this mm -hmm. wrong am I thinking about this wrong at the end of the day I concluded that that relationship wasn't living a very healthy lifestyle to begin with and had underlying mm -hmm. conditions super right. overweight, didn't have a great diet, was a vapor and a constant vapor, nic nicotine, right? There's so many moving parts that go into it all. Mm -hmm. And you don't, we don't know what we don't know. And I have a lot of questions, lots of questions. It doesn't add up for me. Is it genetically driven? How come children aren't getting it in record numbers and passing it to one another? Cause you know, parents are still doing play dates. Give me a break, okay? You, yeah. you, you have these family environments and these family relationships and everybody's getting, getting together for Christmas and you're hearing about these older people over the age of 50 and 70 and 90, they're getting it, but the children at the table didn't get it. These are the questions I have I don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. And the unknowns, and that's the uncertainty and that's what we're constantly dwelling on. Mm -hmm. But I kind of reached this point where it didn't matter whether or not my friend was masked and staying home and quarantined and locked into a room mm -hmm. or whether he went out and lived his life. COVID still came and got him. Mm -hmm. and, and we've um, all been warned. I mean, we've all been warned. Everybody knows that I have 
God knows how many autoimmune diseases. And the doctors are like, whatever, just take all this stuff. And so I'm taking a whole bunch of homeopathics and over-the-counter stuff, right? And so far, so good, right? I mean, you take the D3 with the K2 and the all these weird things that people haven't heard of, right? You just take them and so far, so good. I mean, I've been doing this since almost end of January or end of, yeah, or I say, yeah, end of January, that's, is that what? The beginning of February, would that be it? End of January, not whatever it is, beginning of January. So um, I've been taking this stuff, vitamin C, magnesium, zinc, like all that type of stuff. And you know what? Maybe it's working. And, but they're starting to run out of this stuff. I wonder why. So we're going to go on to our beautiful gummies and our tinctures and our whips. Yeah. Let's talk about natural stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we have, um, our gummies are pretty unique. Um, we're pretty proud of the gummy line. Those right. are the vegans. Oh. So our vegan gummies are produced. No, there you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Produced in Colorado. We call them big honkers because they're really big chunk of gummy. Mm -hmm. um, they're completely vegan and all natural and they are completely infused. They are full spectrum. They're amazing. Um, a lot of people try to or do tend to take them a half at a time because they're so big, right? Mm -hmm. They've got a great consistency to them. Um, they're really mm -hmm. more of a confection consistency and flavor. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of hempy, but amazing. Um, so those come in 30 packs, 30 day supply mm -hmm. okay. for a total milligram count of 750, 750 milligrams. No? Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going like that. I'm like, uh, yeah, um, sorry. 750 yeah. milligrams okay. total. So each oh. one is 25 milligrams. Yeah. And we do have a QR code on here, which is uh -huh. very important. Everybody needs to know that there's a QR code. So the way it works is you put your, key, your phone camera over that QR code. It's going to pull the certificate of analysis that aligns to that QR code and will show you potencies and pertinent information to the quality right. of the product. So this, there are other gummies are 750 milligrams also. Uh -huh. and. They're 25 milligrams a piece. I love these. Correct. Guys, so the gummies, the bears, gone. and the watermelons are really unique and interesting in that we hand toss those and go through a several step process of infusion for that product. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you'll often walk through the lab and see racks and racks and racks of that stuff drying and the smell mm -hmm. of gummy and citric acid everywhere because they're constantly turning them. It's a several stage process in which we um, roll them into oil and then we roll them into isolate and then we roll them back into the oil and we roll them back into the isolate and one, we wait for it's a only, drying isolate's period. Isolate's only in this one, right? Mm -hmm. like and the reason, we, yeah. the reason we do that is because if you haven't gotten that infusion technique and that drying technique down, at the point in time that that bottle goes from hands into a box, a box onto a shipping rack, a shipping rack to a truck, a truck to a truck to a truck, to a truck then delivers, everything is down at the bottom of that jar, the bottom right. of the package, because it shook off. Right. In the case of our products, we don't have that because we have, um, really perfected this roll and toss concept. And because it's several steps, we make sure on our end of quality control that the um, extracts and all of the phytocannabinoids are stuck really well to that product so that right. when you go to ingest it, you're getting full benefit. And then we've got these also, there's only 10 in this packet. So we're gonna go through them very quickly. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that also, <laughs> right? Yeah, so we do so also 10 packs. Um, and sample packs, but they give you an opportunity to try the products and not make too much of a commitment monetarily so you can figure mm -hmm. out if you like them or not and they work for you. Right. So the next thing that was a big deal at the um, CB Expo in Houston, the tinctures. Right. Tinctures were big from what I've heard. Yeah, so you have to remember that the original models of um, of not conception, ingestion. Um, 
The original model, <laughs> I haven't done the that. model came first, and then the gummy model came after. And then we moved to capsules and waters and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. So the tincture yeah. model was the original concept in that you took the extract, you dosed it under your tongue, you held it for a while, 30, 60 seconds, and then you swallowed, and you were getting absorption through the glands underneath your tongue, hence the sublingual. Right. In years since, we've kind of identified that the molecular structure of the extract itself is entirely too big and its viscosity too thick for it truly to be a real and honest sublingual, which is where the nano concept was born, mm -hmm. right? The smaller right. the particle, the better the absorption. Mm -hmm. We didn't buy into the nano concept. We stuck and stayed true to what we feel is basic primitive origins, which is don't mess with it, don't dilute it, you know, give it and make it as robust and natural mm -hmm. as you possibly can in its right. most original form. Mm -hmm. So now we say in theory that you'll assumedly, quite possibly feel the effects within seven minutes of it hitting mm -hmm. that lower um, tract, right. digestive right. tract, and then flowing out into the bloodstream. So Jessica, how long does, would it take people with the um, gel caps? So think. gel caps, these are full spectrum. Yeah. So gel caps are wrapped in a gel um, capsule. They're encapsulated. Mm -hmm. So that gel cap is made out of a, either a bovine or a pork material, mm -hmm. um, generally bone. It's not vegan, and it has to break down in your system. Mm -hmm. For people that have gallbladders and produce a lot of bile, you're going to probably get that response faster than the person that doesn't have a gallbladder and doesn't produce bile. And that's going to be a matter of your own digestive tract and the time it takes for mm -hmm. it to run all the way through your body, come out through the liver, mm -hmm. the kidneys, slough off everything, and then travel back into the bloodstream. Okay. Okay. That can be upwards of 45 minutes to an hour for most. Okay. And then we also have... Um, CBD gel caps, but these are isolate, so they're clear. No, nope. those are broad spectrum. Oh, these, sorry, broad spectrum, they are not isolate. Excuse me. Oops, sorry, okay. I didn't even know so I said broad that. spectrum has no THC, so if you're getting yeah. tested at work or whatever, there is no or very little, you can't, mm -hmm. the truth is you cannot take out all, all, all the THC because the molecules are alive and active. So they convert themselves, right. which means that one could go, listen, today I feel like being a THC. So um, <laughs> we extract as much as we possibly can, which brings us down to a 10th of a 10th of a 10th of a 10th of a 100th of a whatever. Um, but there is no detectable THC in the full mm -hmm. spectrum. So you're getting the benefit of all of the other cannabinoids, right? without right. the THC. Right, yeah, exactly. So we can talk to you guys, if you guys have any questions about broad spectrum and full spectrum, we can get on a, you know, the phone with you or something and explain why one might be better than the other for you, correct? Right. It's all personal. Yeah, it's all personal. Um, but the big thing is that if you are getting drug tested, for sure you do not want full spectrum. Absolutely right. not. And yeah. anytime that somebody tells you, oh my gosh, it's less than three tenths of a percent of total THC, you won't test positive. You need to run away from that person, not trust that person. Mm -hmm. Don't take that brand because you absolutely do run a risk. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I so appreciate Jessica being on today and it didn't quite go as planned, but it did actually. Um, <laughs> these are things that we need to talk about. Um, and I did not purposely cry since people think that I do. That's not, I didn't do that on purpose, but it's very, this is a very emotional time right now. The holidays have been tough. New Year's is gonna be tough. It's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to be vulnerable. And it's okay to be honest for God's sakes. It is about time we're honest with one another because mm -hmm. the moment we are and we're authentic, we mm -hmm. can better cope yeah. and support one another. So I'm gonna encourage you, Jenny, to be absolutely honest in your feelings and don't be told by somebody else what you do and don't feel because these are very true for many, many people. And you don't have the benefit of a life partner, children, pets, it's just Jenny. It's the Jenny show. And I totally mm -hmm. get it. There are a lot of people like you. So yeah. you know, I think yeah. it's really important that we talk about it, that you share those mm -hmm. very raw, very real feelings, because 
it lets other people know, Jenny, that they're not alone. Yeah. So you guys, all the articles I've been posting um, about cannabidiol life, getting their oils into um, Brazil, being approved by um, the Brazilian government and being treating, uh, treated on, with a chemo patient right now, please read those. They're very important. I've already had some people reach out to me. Um, I will get you in touch with them directly. If you guys have any questions about that. And um, I'm very excited for them that they got in there. It's not easy. Thanks, there any Jenny. other countries in there. So, We're pretty excited. I know. So congratulations. And Thank I hope you. you guys have a great New Year's, okay? Thank Please. you. You too, Jenny. I so Thank appreciate you. you. Thanks, sweetie. All right. I love you. Bye-bye, everybody. Happy New Year. Bye.